What's up guys, this is Brett here from brettdev.com coming at you once again from Chiang Mai in Thailand. And today in this video, I wanna to touch on the topic of cost of living yet again in Thailand, um, in particular Chiang Mai, um, because it's a popular topic. Lots of people keep asking me about it. And in this video, I wanna address something that like a lot of people don't mention. It's all well and good me talking about how much it costs for an apartment here, how much it costs um, for X, Y, and Z, but nobody ever talks about what you don't have to pay for, right? So the first thing I noticed when I first moved to uh, Thailand was how much shit I actually wasn't paying for anymore. So here is a breakdown and a list of all of the stuff that I used to pay for when I used to live back home in England that I no longer have to pay for anymore living in Thailand. So this is where, in my opinion, the bulk of your money savings come in. Now, obviously, first things first is you don't pay huge amounts for rent. So that's the one of the big the big things in Thailand, uh, even particularly Chiang Mai, is the cost saving on rent is really what makes up most of the money that you'll save. Uh, back in England, I had a flat, like a two bedroom flat that I had a mortgage on, and sometimes um, that mortgage would be like 800 pounds. Um, there were periods it was 800 pounds a month for a two bedroom flat. I get the same place now for about 150 pounds. So the difference there in the rent is just crazy, okay? That's just one of the things. Secondly, you don't pay any council tax. So um, in England, it's like forced upon you to pay council tax. Um, everybody has to pay it. In Thailand, it doesn't exist. You don't have to pay it. Um, all the stuff that your council tax should pay for, um, like your rubbish collection, I guess, and stuff like that. Um, wherever you live, your landlord's gonna take care of that. So, and I'm sure it doesn't cost a lot because it's not added onto your rent or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that. Home insurance. So home insurance, buildings insurance, contents insurance, all these insurances that you have to pay when you have a place in England. Again, um, may not be applicable if you're renting, but in England, but if you own a place in England, you've got to pay all these insurances and all this crap and it's law. You have to pay it. You don't have a choice because you are like a debt slave. Okay, you have to pay what the government tells you to pay in England. And here, you don't have to pay it. You don't have to pay any um, insurances. If you don't want contents insurance, you don't have to have it. If your house burns down, your house burns down, tough shit. You know, and um, it's not law that you must have it uh, or anything like that, so that's great. Sticking with the costs that you save through your home, um, one massive cost, uh, especially if you live in a cold place, is heating. Right, so in Thailand it's never cold, so you don't have to pay heating bills. In fact, they don't even have heaters, they don't have radiators, they don't have any type of heating systems in Thailand. Well, I've never seen one anyway. You can buy a little portable um, electric heater if you like, um, and I think it's been, I can count on one hand in the last three or four years, the number of cold days I've experienced where I thought, oh, do you know what, it'd be nice to have a little heater literally in the middle of winter for like one or two days in the whole year. Um, we had a freak winter a couple of years ago, but even that was like two days. So there's no heating bills. You don't have to pay any heating. Now, you do have aircon bills here, but they're never as high as a heating bill because um, you can run the aircon for a little while, it turn it off, it kind of controls the room temperature, you bring it down a couple of degrees. So you do have aircon bills, but they're nowhere near what you would pay for heating back in England or in Canada or somewhere really cold like that. Car and motorbike insurance. Right, so um, I have a motorbike, I don't have a car here, but the insurance here is significantly lower. I can't speak for a car, I would imagine the car insurance here is way lower than the, than the West, where the price is all inflated and stuff like that. What I can speak for is a motorbike and a motorbike insurance, and when you go and you get your motorbike taxed every year, you pay about three, four, five hundred baht every year, you get it serviced, taxed, and that's it. That's your insurance. There is no extra premium, there is no monthly payment for you to have the privilege of riding a motorbike or to drive a car. Um, I'm pretty sure there probably is car insurance, but it's like I say, nowhere near, it's probably similar, handled similarly to how the bike is handled, okay? Now, with a motorbike, you pay that <clears throat> one time for the whole year, it's like 300 baht, and every single person riding a motorbike here has um, like raw, basic government insurance, so that covers you and the government will cover you for insurance if you fall off. It's not a lot, it's only like um, 20, 30,000 baht, which is like 500 pounds, something like that, 500, 800 pounds. Um, 
but that covers you at a very basic level. And then if you want to go and get premium motorbike insurance to cover you for a death or, or something like that, um, you can do. And if you don't have it and you have an accident, you're paying out of pocket. <clears throat> but that's the way Thailand works. And it's great. You know, it's freedom. You don't have to have government imposed um, insurances on you. You don't get pulled over and have your insurance checked. Um, you don't have your insurance checked with cameras. You don't have any of that crap. Um, it's 300 baht for the year and you're kind of free, you know. So it's another massive cost saving. Next is fuel. So when I lived back in England, I had a big like four by four um, Suzuki thing, big car, um, f like four wheel drive. And I would spend about 70 to 80 pounds a week on fuel for that car. Um, and that would get me to my office and back um, to the gym and back and that's pretty much the extent of it. I didn't really go many places and all those trips were like 10-15 minutes each way and I do that like once or twice a day. So I would be spending like 80 pound a week just to get to my office and back which is ridiculous. That's like 320 pounds in a month. Um, insane. Here I have a motorbike like I said and I probably fill the motorbike up uh, I would say two or three times a month and I use it all the time I go everywhere on it and every single time I fill that motorbike up it costs me two pounds so I'm probably spending no more than five pounds a month on fuel as opposed to 320 pounds that you used to spend on fuel so that is just huge so now you can start to see how when you do live in a place like this why it's so cheap because it's not just that things are cheaper food is cheaper rent is cheaper it's that you aren't buying all this other crap. You don't spend money on other stuff. And even if I did have a car here, and even if I did drive the car, the fuel here is cheaper at the gas station, the petrol station, the fuel is cheaper than what it is in England. It's like half the price. Um, obviously, it does have to be imported into the UK and stuff like that. And obviously, we just get totally fucked on fuel prices and always have in England. So other places in the world, fuel is much cheaper. Last but not least, the final thing that I'm gonna mention is um, small things like um, mobile phone contracts, your internet bill, all of this stuff is cheaper. So I pay, um, I've got a great deal on my phone at the moment for a company called AIS. It's a Wi-Fi deal. And I will make another video about this in future because a few people have been asking me about getting connected and um, Wi-Fi and how they set their phone up and stuff. So this is a great deal. I pay, it's called AIS Marathon. I pay 600 baht for six months of internet as a one-time payment. So that's the equivalent of like um, 10, 15 pounds. And that is for six months. I don't have to pay an internet bill anymore. That's pay as you go, you pay up, up front once and now have unlimited internet for six months. My fixed line connection, fiber optic connection, 100 meg, comes out at about six, 700 baht. So again, you're talking like 15, 10, 15 pounds, as opposed to like 30, 40 pounds that I used to pay back in the UK. So all these little bills, like stuff like that, um, like I say, it's never any contract. You're never tied into any contract. It's just always like pay up front, done. Um, it's always cheaper um, and just way more cost effective. So, I mean, I don't get any bills here anymore, which is just amazing. I remember um, living back in England and having to deal with bills every day and pay this bill and that bill and then just when you think you've got money in your bank, there's another bill that comes along and just whacks all your money away. It's just ridiculous. And it's like soul destroying, right? So here I don't have any bills. I just have my rent, um, my internet, and my phone whenever it runs out after the six months, I've got to put more money on it. I've got to put fuel in my bike and I've got to eat. And that's about it. That's the extent of it. And that's the way I love to keep it. Um, keep it simple. You feel free. Um, you don't feel like the government and the man is like oppressing you because that's how I felt in England like um, and that's it guys so that is shit I no longer pay for and um, I hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below tell me I want to know what what stuff you pay for in your home country that you're forced to pay for and that you wish you didn't have to pay for so um, as you can hear it's pouring down a rain now so I'm gonna wrap the video up. Until next time guys, this is Brett from brettdev.com and we're out, peace.